the scientific methodology of getting knowledge is ascending knowledge that is how science has been pushing forth the frontiers of human knowledge through discovery however ascending process of knowledge has its limitations how do you know they are not free from error we don't know what is considered true today will be considered true after 50 years as well or not because a new discovery overturns the previous theories and if we wish to know the absolute truth then the ascending process of knowledge is insufficient bhagavad gita chapter 4 Verse chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Evam param para praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu sakale neha mahata yoho nashta parantapa O subduer of enemies the saintly kings thus received the science of yog in a continuous tradition but with the long passage of time it was lost to the world Lord Krishna says this knowledge was being passed in a tradition from master to disciple to master to disciple it came from the perfect source that was god and kept getting down passed down perfectly so it was accessible as a perfect source of knowledge this is descending knowledge Descending knowledge is so beautiful. If you get the proper source from where you can get this knowledge, you can access the truth on day 1 itself. There is no learning, no struggle required. In contrast to that is ascending knowledge. this is the scientific methodology of getting knowledge where you say i know this much today then tomorrow i know this much day after tomorrow i know this much that is how science has been pushing forth the frontiers of human knowledge through discovery however ascending process of knowledge has its limitations we don't know what is considered true today will be considered true after 50 years as well or not because a new discovery overturns the previous theories like for example in the time of the greeks the atoms were considered the tiniest indivisible particles of nature you could not go up smaller than the atom and then rutherford he passed alpha particles through matter and he got the ticks on the other side with the geiger counter and he proved that 99.99% of matter is empty space and that is then how periodic table got created however that periodic table got changed subsequently and people's understanding of matter now that was a simplified understanding electron proton neutron and then later on they came further and discovered niels bohr and company that matter at the subatomic level is not what we think of it to be in classical physics 
it has got a dual particle and wave nature and at any time you cannot predict whether it's particle or wave if you do then you cannot predict its location that was heisenberg's principle of uncertainty so when einstein heard this 15 years ago he had propounded his equation e is equal to mc square in the year 1905 and the 1920s niels bohr and these quantum physicists they came up with a new theory so einstein said my every attempt to reconcile the new kind of physics with our classical understanding has failed it is as if the ground is being pulled from under our feet with nothing to fall back upon so the ascending process of knowledge is fine but firstly it takes so long do we have the time to wait a thousand years before knowledge reaches that point and if we go by today's judgments we don't know whether people's perspectives are correct or not one anthropologist went to africa he was working with the pygmies in congo and he took this pygmy called kenge and got him out now they live in dense forests where they never see the horizon so he remembers taking him out of the forest and there on the flat land some buffaloes were there in a distance the pygmy asked what kind of insects are those the anthropologist said they are buffaloes the pygmy said are you making fun of me how can they be buffaloes they look like insects and that is when the anthropologist realized this big me has never seen long distance so what we assume to be natural that when you see sub objects from far they seem small is a complete revelation to him just because we see an angulate from far we will not think it to be an insect but the pygmy has his own perspective so we all have our relative perspectives but through which we see the world now einstein of course in his time was recognized as a genius but very few people know he almost lost that title to a horse called clever hans in the year 1891 a gentleman in germany called wilhelm van osten he trained his stallion educated him so that the stallion could answer the questions of human beings like for example if you ask the horse and the horse was called clever hans you ask him what is 3 plus 4 and the horse would answer 7 not with his mouth the moment the question was over the horse would start tapping its hoof and it would stop when the answer was complete so that caused such a stir all over berlin people were shocked there were public performances of clever hands and this continued for 13 years of course he did not get all answers right but he knew far more than any other creature on four legs did so then one professor in the berlin psychological institute he sent his assistant called oscar fungst to go and check it out and oscar fungst 
observed something strange that if mr austin the horse trainer did not know the answer to the question then the horse also did not know the answer to the question and if this trainer was behind the horse then the horse did not know the answer to the question so slowly slowly he discovered that the horse was actually not understanding what wilhelm van osten was saying but the moment wilhelm van osten spoke a question he used to bend a little and the horse used to observe that and would start tapping and whenever the answer was complete unconsciously he would straighten up and the horse would stop the deception was so subtle it was not intentional austen was not a cheat and the horse was only observing its master's behavior and responding to it so this is the subjective way in which we all look at the world now you may laugh at clever hands but all of us are stuck in our little paradigms and if we wish to know the absolute truth then the ascending process of knowledge is insufficient every year thousands of self help books get published in the market how to think positive how to give up negative etc they are all good they are all useful but how do you know they are not free from error on the other hand if you adopt the descending process of knowledge the problem gets solved how did you learn physics you went to a teacher who knew and to the textbooks that were written by the teachers so on day one itself you access proper knowledge and started reading it so lord krishna says that this knowledge i which i gave to brahma and i gave to the sun god and it started getting passed down but the problem arose that with time it started getting corrupted the parampara why the guru was giving good knowledge but the disciple was understanding as per his intellect there was a tree and some bird was sitting on the tree and some people below now the bird was saying something in its own language and the people below started contemplating and discussing what is the bird saying one said it is saying he was a trader he said listen carefully the bird is saying sont mirch adrak sont mirch adrak sont mirch adrak the second said you are mistaken listen again he was a wrestler he said it is saying dand baithak kasrat dand baithak kasrat dand baithak kasrat third was a devotee of lord ram he said listen again it is saying ram sita dashrat ram sita dashrat ram sita dashrat now what the bird was saying the bird alone knew but everybody interpreted as per their own nature munde munde matir bhinna tunde tunde saraswati so likewise lord krishna says that the parampara got corrupted so i have again come and i am reestablishing it arjun so god can either take avatar and reestablish it or he can do it through his saints the guru so we have here the knowledge that lord krishna gave to arjun and we are understanding it through a descended saint 
जगत गुरु श्री कृपालु जी महाराज हु वॉज ए डिसेंडेड सेंट हु रिसीव द टाइटल ऑफ द फिफ्थ ओरिजिनल जगत गुरु इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री एंड जगत गुरु तम सो द सुप्रीम स्पिरिचुअल पर्सनैलिटी इन द लास्ट फ्यू हंड्रेड इयर्स द नॉलेज ही गेव it is through the light of that knowledge that we are accessing the divine verses of the bhagavad gita